What is going on, boys and girls? It's your boy, Mr. Showtime. We are on the heels of the 2016 WWE Draft. And uh, this is part one of three of uh, Rant and Wrestle. And I kind of wanted to break each uh, brand down and then kind of just look at everything as a whole here. Okay? Um, so, I was actually pretty okay with the draft yesterday. I mean, there's not, not anything that really... That really bothered me. I mean, I tried to stay off social media the whole time, so I, I didn't want to know, you know, what people were thinking. I didn't want anybody to kind of bring it down because, you know, from what I what I saw after, is there were some people that, you know, were upset about, you know, the order people were maybe drafted in or what shows they were drafted to, um, and then as well as like, you know, you know, some people that may not have been drafted at all, um, specifically people from NXT, so. This first video, I kind of want to talk about SmackDown. Um, SmackDown, in my opinion, it's actually what I was most excited for, uh, just because, you know, obviously we have uh, Daniel Bryan as the GM, and we have, uh, you know, it, it just seems like a fresh start, even with Raw, too, but for SmackDown, more, more so, probably just because, you know, it's finally going live, officially. So I wanted to kind of break down uh, the picks. I'm not really going to go in order as far as what rounds go, but um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of break them down into singles wrestlers, tag teams, and then female uh, female wrestlers, or female superstars, whatever you want to call them. Um, we're looking at, for our singles wrestlers, um, big names such as AJ Styles, uh, Alberto Del Rio, Apollo Crews, which I was very happy he got drafted. Uh, Baron Corbin, one of my, all, my not my all-time favorites, but one of my favorites of the uh, the new era. Loved him in NXT, love him right now. Uh, Bray Wyatt, who was uh, pretty surprised, you know, you know, when we were watching it, we were surprised to see that Bray Wyatt was drafted by himself and that with the Wyatt family together. Um, we did discuss this uh, earlier where we were like, you know what, Bray Wyatt's probably you know, the one guy out of all these tag teams that would probably flourish um, if, if he were to be drafted by himself. So I'm very interested to see what happens with him. Uh, we also got Dean Ambrose, current WWE champion. Kane, or uh, when they drafted him, they called him Demon Kane. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Dolph Ziggler. Eric Rowan, so that's going to be interesting to see if he does uh, interact with Bray or if he's going to be his own person. Because if anybody does remember, towards the end of uh, 2014, uh, Eric Rowan uh, broke up from the uh, from the uh, Wyatt family. And, you know, he kind of like a short run. I want to say maybe uh, kind of unsuccessful, really, uh, as a singles, singles competitor before he got back together with, uh, with uh, Luke Harper. And uh, speaking of that, Luke Harper not drafted at all. And wasn't even listed as one of the uh, the uh, eligible superstars to be drafted. So that's uh, that's kind of a weird thing. I wonder what's going to be happening with him. Uh, moving on, we got uh, probably, in my opinion, the biggest draw you can get is you got John Cena exclusive to SmackDown. Um, Kalisto, which was a head scratcher just because the Cruiserweight division is going to be over on Raw. So that raises some questions right there. Uh, we got Randy Orton. Coming back to the blue brand. Uh, the Miz, current Intercontinental Champion, with Maurice coming to SmackDown. Also, uh, we have Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawley, so it's going to be kind of interesting. Maybe we'll see the, the, uh, the hype bros here on, uh, on SmackDown. Um, I do like what they're doing with, with, uh, with Zack Ryder as far as, uh, you know, his new little singles push here. You know, I, I don't think he's going to beat Rusev at Battleground, but, you know, there is the possibility of him bringing that U.S. title. Uh, to uh, to SmackDown. So, those are our, our singles wrestlers. Um, now, our tag teams that were drafted. We got Breezango, Breeze the accommodation of Tyler Breeze and Fandango, uh, The Ascension, Connor and Victor, uh, Jimmy and Jay Uso, The Vaude Villains, Simon Gotch, and Aiden English, and then also, and this is the one I was most pumped for, was American Alpha, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. Um, so excited to see them. Uh, on SmackDown, um, and then we move on to the female wrestlers or the female superstars. We got Becky Lynch. Um, probably the most surprising draft pick of the whole night: uh, Eva Marie, Naomi making her return, Natalia, 
Alexa Bliss. And another surprise, because I thought they'd keep her down at NXT for a while, maybe give her a run with the title. Uh, but we're looking at Carmella, who I believe was the final pick of the night, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, so, those are your, you know... And the one thing to keep in mind is that is the draft, for every two picks, Raw had three picks. So, uh, Raw had the first pick, and SmackDown would pick one, Raw would pick another one, SmackDown would do another one, and then Raw. So, basically, there was five picks, then we'd do a match or a segment, and then, you know, you know Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon, along with uh, um, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan, they would make their way back into the stage and make their additional draft picks. So, the one thing that, that is really interesting here, at least to me, is that you have the WWE Champion and the Intercontinental Champion. Those are the only titles on SmackDown right now. Now, there's been some rumors circulating that WWE is not going to have a secondary world title. Um, I don't know how true that is. I mean, WWE hasn't come out and said anything. Uh, we haven't heard anything from, like, Dave Meltzer or anything like that. So it's it's really kind of up in the air. But there, there also wasn't any word if the WWE champion, or any champions, for that matter, if they're able to float between the shows. Now, me personally, I would really hope that they wouldn't do that. The only, the only champions that I think should be able to float, if any... Uh, would be the World Heavyweight Champion, so the WWE Champion at this time, um, and the Women's Champion. So I think it's smart to have, you know, one brand for... for you want to make each brand kind of stand out. So I think what you can do with SmackDown, if, if they do get a secondary world title, obviously they'll have that. But if, let's say... Let's say um, if, if we're not going to have you know, any, like, the tag team titles move over, which I think would be a shame. I think SmackDown should create a secondary tag team championship just because you have teams such as, I mean, American Alpha. If you don't have them fighting for a title, uh, or at least in contendership for a title, I think that's going to suck. So that's one thing that just really hasn't been established is the question regarding championships. Um, and the same thing goes with the, the female superstars. So I, I don't know where they're going with this. I, I thought that it would have made more sense if you're going to have the Cruiserweights exclusive to Monday Night Raw, why not make the Women's Championship exclusive to SmackDown? That way, you know, you, you, know, you go to one show for one thing, and it's like SmackDown's not a carbon copy of Raw. SmackDown is its own thing, so you oh, we'll go to SmackDown. That's where we're going to see all the women action. Raw, we're going to have all those cruiserweights. So then maybe you have the U.S. title on Raw, IC title on SmackDown, and you have your world championship float. Your world champions and maybe your tag team champions float. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, that makes the titles mean more. Um, almost like, you know, if you think about it back in the day, um, when Ric Flair was NWA champion, uh, you know, he would float between the different territories. Uh, and speaking of that, I mean, you have so many contenders uh, as single stars. you got AJ Styles and John Cena and Randy Orton, obviously right up there with Dean Ambrose. And then you have, you know, your your upper lower, your upper mid card with The Miz and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, you could say, like, Demon Kane, Alberto Del Rio, and then you have your up-and-comers like Kalisto, um, Baron Corbin, and I, I don't know, and Zack Ryder, you know, guys like that. I know you're, I'm probably missing a few. Um, I think you, there there needs to be some kind of some kind of stability or some kind of of uh, just just information <laughs> regarding these titles. I personally, I think that we're gonna get some more answers at Battleground regarding uh, any more championships coming to SmackDown. And the thing to keep in mind, too, is that this was just the draft. So a lot of people are saying, you know, this is the first show of, like, the new era of the, you know, Raw and SmackDown. When in reality, you want to think of it as almost the second to last show because we have Battleground. I think once Monday Night Raw and SmackDown start the week after Battleground, then we're going to see the development between the two shows. And especially, we're going to see the development of SmackDown. So uh, that's going to do it right here for the uh, part one of, uh, of our WWE draft 
uh, wrestle and rant, or rant and wrestle, whatever we want to call the show, or whatever the segment is, but uh, guys, go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, and uh, we'll be back for part two. We'll see you a little bit later, and have a fantastic rest of your day.